Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here at Chaken Analytics. Thanks for tuning in to this week's halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. Each and every week, we kind of look at both systems the ACP platform, where our plugin is available, uh, available for purchase. You can uh, just locate it. I'll show you where, how, how to find it on the ACP platform. And really, what it does is it goes over the fundamental rating of some individual stocks that we rate. Obviously, we rate about 4,400. Not every stock is rated but about 4,400 covers a wide universe. Some newer stocks, newer IPOs, if you're less than one year old, as far as trading uh, range goes, we will not have a rating until it's about a year old. So if there's some names you've been following and they're not quite a year old, we're not gonna have a rating on them. However, uh, most of them do. So we start to build some technicals, obviously on the ACP platform, you can do that all day long and any which way you'd like because it's an amazing uh, setup and I like it and we use it all the time. And uh, we combine the fundamental rating, okay? You take our rating and you combine it with technicals on the ACP platform. So this week, I'm gonna start looking at some energy names, you know, specifically in the natural gas uh, sector and industry that's kind of all kind of combined and kind of in one. There's many companies who do both, obviously, and there are some that's you know, specifically focused on it. But I'm just gonna pick the top names that I've kind of been coming across and looking at and we'll compare them, look at the system on the Chaken side, we'll look at the ACP side as well. And as you know, again, I'll reiterate it, on the ACP side, you can put all a plethora of indicators. I don't know which ones you use specifically, but you can add them to your charts, obviously, but you can always see the power gauge side by side with the indicators. And that's really where you get the edge when you combine fundamentals and technicals. So let's go take a look at the charts and see what we can see. All right, everybody, we're back here on the ACP platform. Now, I'm starting off here on the S&P because I wanted to point something out. We've been calling out some areas uh, along the way, and I don't know if I shared uh, this many times with you, but um, I do share this out on social media quite a bit. You can follow me uh, at Pete Carmesino on Twitter. I posted this out this morning. I posted it out a few times uh, along the way. And this is really a chart that um, I used and I built, you know, putting a head and shoulders pattern together looking at the high of where the head was formed versus uh, the neckline, where I thought was the neckline anyway, and then taking that same move up to the top of where the head formed and just taking a mirror image of it and drawing it down. And we got down to about 37.50. Now there's a lot of folks doing Fibonacci retracements and all kinds of things, and they're all kind of coming into the same area. So look, technical analysis sometimes um, is a self-fulfilling prophecy if enough people use it as well. But at the same time, it is an area where you can use and you know you, uh, a technique that you can use to build areas of targets and so this actually on friday hit a low of 38 10 and change and it's really um inside the range we were at around 38 11 or so is the top of that box so pretty interesting we've been building this for quite some time again go check out my twitter feed you can see the previous charts on there as well it's at pete carmesino on twitter but at the same time uh, we wanted to just point that out. Now, I've been told um, that I could have used this area as the neckline as well. Now, again, I'm not a CMT, but I've been doing technical analysis for a very long time. And um, so I said, okay, I'm game. So I did it again. I basically built another mirror image and used the neckline. Actually, the odd part is I was using this as sort of an area of um, of target area that if it broke down lower, it would be worse. So maybe this one has a double neckline. I don't know. Um, but at the same time, if I do that, that targets down to 34.20. So give it, you know, a 50 point range, 25 up, 25 down around there. And you'd be 34.75 to call 3,400 roughly. And um, let's hope that doesn't come true. But if it does, if you're following trends, you're going to have opportunities to kind of either get out of the way or take advantage of it, no matter which way you play it. But it's nice to always take a look at the overall market just to kind of understand what you're up against and what's happening. So let's dive into some of these names I was talking about. So we're going to look at um, uh, just some names like uh, Apache, which is really a name that should come to mind uh, if you think of natural gas just in general. And I want to show you the rating, right? Look at this rating. Look at the PE. Look at the yield. Look at the chart. I mean, obviously, it's been in a trend for quite some time, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, this is not a brand new idea. A lot of folks are thinking, you know, is this really the uh, area that it can continue or is it too long in the tooth or whatever the case may be? Now, if I look at a five-year chart, I see we're not really quite at the highs, which we're very close, 
about seven points away or so. If we get up to that 50 area that we did, you know, back in the 2018s and 19s. But when this chart started to break down, it obviously formed a very long and drawn out trend for several years, multiple years. And when it started the uptrend, it was met with a lot of resistance and hesitancy. But from an area of, you know, understanding what's happening in the natural gas market and the oil market, the shortages, the disruption to supply chains, all of the above, you've got to start looking at these major producers and start, you know, looking for opportunities to get involved. Another one is EOG. Now, this is a big name. If you remember back from the 2008s and change, another big move, big mover, I should say. But again, a very, it's almost an identical chart. Now, where am I getting these names from? I'm getting them from uh, just uh, one of the ETFs here, the FCG First Trust Natural Gas. Now, I put this out to some of our members about a week or so ago to take a look at and start to potentially take positions when you get in that oversold area here. Here, I mean, we're not far out of this range. Now, look how wide the bands are, the volatility bands are. We're kind of living on this middle line, and it's kind of catching up to our long-term trend line. If I go to the ACP platform and just pull up FCG, now, we don't rate it. Obviously, it's an ETF um, we don't rate it on the ACP platform, I should say, uh, but it is kind of consolidating here up at the top. And, you know, I'd stretch and maybe ask um, someone who's more uh, formally trained on technical analysis to tell me if that's not a bull flag. I don't know what is, um, but it looks like it is forming that kind of pattern. So an interesting name, if you don't want to take single name uh, risk, you can obviously look at the ETF. Another one is Occidental Petroleum, and I'll, uh, a lot of people call you know, uh, pronounce it Occidental because of the uh, symbol. I think it's Occidental, but it looks like it's spelled Occidental. Um, again, really up at the upper end of its range, uh, really overbought. Not every name is looking like this. So you have opportunity to kind of take a look at some different names that are under some different setups in these areas. But if we go to Occidental and pull up the uh, power gauge, you can see everything is pinned. Now the financials are showing bearish and we remind people why. The reason why it's showing bearish on our particular rating is because uh, in that uh, particular section of our rating, right, the financial section, we use something called price to book and price to sales. Price to book is really pushing it toward the negative side. Obviously, long-term debt to equity, we know oil and gas exploration um, and production is a very capital intensive business. But look at the cash flow. There's plenty of cash flow to support the debt. And really what's pushing it down is the ROE and obviously the price to book. Now, as natural gas has doubled this year, right? We, we know from the from a fact that um, you can see if you pull up the uh, NAC, yeah, which is why I love the, the system. I can pull up indices, get a chart on it. It's really cool. Um, we can see where it's really, really, really found a, an incredible move here. I mean, beginning of the year, we were at $4 call at three fifty eight. It hit a high of close to nine, if not nine. I think it did trade at $9, if I'm not mistaken. So the point being here is that, yep, yeah, it hit a high of nine and turned around. Point being here is that natural gas has room to run. Here in, our, in the United States, we pay... Again, this nine to eight dollars per million uh, BTU—that's uh, sort of the way it's priced. In Europe, they're paying over forty dollars. Okay, we have our own vertically integrated system with between Canada and ourselves, and obviously pipelines and liquid liquefied natural gas. We have many ways to kind of distribute natural gas, and so we've been a little bit immune to the pricing situation in Europe. But if you just look at the commodity and look at what's happening here in general, and you take a longer term view. Dare I pull the monthly chart? I will. And I really pull it out and take a look at, you know, where this was from, gosh, 2008 and change. Look at those high spikes, right? And so we typically saw a trend line here and then obviously here. So what I'm trying to point out is, is that when you're looking at these type of names, look at the commodity and follow what that's doing to kind of tell you where the stocks might be pricing in maybe just current prices where the future prices can obviously be, you know, a lot better. And here's another name I like. Uh, we look at Marathon Oil all the time. Just a, a really uh, structured uh, bullish chart here up to the upside. The financials a little bit better. Everything else is looking great. Low PE, decent dividend, not great, but, you know, pays you a little bit along the way. And the idea here is to look at the relative strength that is continuation here. Now, again, a lot of people think this might be long in the tooth from a trend standpoint. I wish I could tell you for sure 
no one knows that, right? Nobody knows that for sure. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're staying in stocks that are in that have strong trends and strong industries. And this is why we're looking at these. Look at this one up, 8% today, Antero Resources. Again, another name that was oversold and, and obviously bullish in relative strength. That's why the combination, okay, the combination of fundamentals and technicals really comes into play. Now, I'm looking at a long-term chart here on AR. Look how low it got. I mean, this is when uh, the beginning of the pandemic, when oil and natural gas, everything kind of sold off on a monthly chart. Let me go back to a daily real quick and just kind of look at, you know, again, a, a really consolidating setup here. Boy, I'll tell you, if, if it could move above that $39, it looks interesting to me. Power gauge, not the greatest, but it is setting up to bullish. Again, financials and things like price to book and uh, uh, debt to equity, things of that nature are kind of pushing the financials down just a tad. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Obviously, the markets can ignore financials, the specific sector of our, of our rating for a very long time. We know that. But at the end of the day, you're looking at technicals and experts still behind the name, not only the name, but actually the whole theme and the narrative of uh, higher prices uh, for longer. Okay. So we, you know, we might say, now here's a darling of the, of the group. Devon Energy has been just on a tear absolutely from September. Now that breakout here around the $28 was really accompanied by uh, a lot of moving parts on our system, but that relative strength informed us first. And then look what the rating caught up later. Now, we do see the rating ahead sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes, as I said to you, the market's going to ignore fundamentals and get behind the theme first, understanding that the fundamentals might be able to catch up. And that's kind of what this does for you, right? When you put these together and you look at uh, being able to track both your technicals, and again, you can put, we know, any, any indicator you want on here, which is an amazing system on stock charts. But just adding this little slug here of one more piece of information to kind of solidify or maybe validate what you're seeing in the trend. Um, or if you were looking early in the trend and you started to see it change and saw a bullish rating here around the $50 level, you still were afforded another $20 up on the, up, on the upside. That's a big move, okay? You don't always have to find the bottom in these names. And when the trend is really moving, we know what the, the phrase is, right? The trend is your friend. And uh, don't fight it if it's there, right? Try to manage it, but don't fight it. Um, we'll look at Hess. This is one an integrated oil and gas uh, name. Again, late to the party here on the breakout. Wait, you know, we saw Devin was way ahead, months ahead. And then here's another one where the rating changed relatively soon after the relative strength changed as well. And so once you start to see that, you start to put this together and you say, wow, I can see the power of both of these, you want to add that power gauge to the ACP platform. And I think, you know, you'll find uh, it to be very beneficial. Um, and just another one, CNX Resources. Again, this is a, a smaller name in the group of a $3.8 billion market cap. Not small, really. It's really almost the mid cap, uh, but definitely in that small to mid range. Not the best fundamentals, but the chart was looking interesting as well. But again, a rising tide lifts all boats. When you're seeing this um, name, like let's look at this one, UNG, and I'll pull it up on the ACP platform. Now, we don't rate the commodity uh, ETFs in general, but we do build technicals on them. And look at the move here. Pretty amazing. You know, from 16, it didn't quite get to a double yet, but if I pull up the ACP platform, you can just take a look at it here as well. Uh, just a clear uh, potential picture. If you can kind of see, you know, where it stands and where it's been. And again, look at it on the long-term basis. You've got a pretty long uh, track record of a downtrend. It's just starting to break out. So always look at the commodity underneath the, the stock. All right, everybody, that's all I have for today. Again, thanks for joining me here on the Halftime Show. Uh, Pete Carmesino here with Chaken Analytics. Again, follow me on Twitter at Pete Carmesino on Twitter. You can start to see some of those charts between, you know, during the week. And then obviously the videos uh, are here every Monday. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.